Chicago For my video essay, I'm actually going to be talking about a video game. However, this video game, Red Dead Redemption 2, is the closest a video game has ever come to being a playable movie, in my opinion. Diving the player into the Wild West like never before, the player must put themselves in the shoes of a troubled outlaw in 1899 America dealing with internal and external conflicts. I know now that I am homeward bound. Between this in-depth, living world and a beautiful, complex storyline, this game has all the features needed to create a blockbuster hit. World I'm moving on. I've been living too fast. Arthur Morgan, the main character of Red Dead, is a 36-year-old man who has only ever known the life of an outlaw. World I'm gone. His two mentors took him on at a young age of 14 after being a delinquent orphan since being a young boy. However, as the United States became slowly more and more civilized over the years, Dutch became increasingly paranoid about where he fit in this new world and began to lose focus. This causes Dutch to slowly reveal just how narcissistic and selfish he really is, as he starts to make decisions at the expense of others and doesn't typically listen to any advice that people try to give him. This is where the story structure of the game starts to come into play, because the game is broken up into five chapters, and it starts with an extremely slow burn of Dutch slowly losing his grip as leader. The game almost begins en media res, with the game picking up immediately after a failed heist by the gang. However, they've already successfully retreated up into the mountains and are now facing the threat of a blizzard. This being said, the inciting incident has pretty much already happened, and we're thrown directly into the action. This is where Arthur begins to face conflict, both within himself and among the other characters. Once we get into Chapter 3 and the rising action is finished, the slow burn hits a much faster pace as Arthur sees Dutch become more desperate, confused, and unhinged, making mistakes, killing innocents, and not caring for the gang. Arthur begins to wonder if what they're doing is still the right thing. However, his loyalty causes him to continuously validate Dutch's mistakes and lies in his own head, or with Dutch whispering lies in his ear. We need to go. You. You ran away. Oh, I did no such thing. Don't be a fool. They could be back here any minute. We did it, gentlemen. This is another aspect of the game that I think truly enhances the storytelling within it. Because the player experiences the game through Arthur's perspective, so we understand why he feels the way he does about Dutch. However, being an objective third-party viewer, we see the way that Dutch is putting the gang at risk, not caring for others, and simply not listening to anything Arthur has to say. Arthur's goals slowly begin to change throughout the story, especially once we hit chapter 4, and we see him evolve as he faces his mistakes and challenges. One of his goals throughout, however, is to try to keep Dutch the good man that he knows he is. Once Arthur gets diagnosed with tuberculosis towards the end of chapter 5, his entire outlook changes. He has a deep moral reflection and begins to think about what kind of person he wants to be remembered as. If we don't stop soon, we'll all be dying. However, this slow story beat transitions us perfectly into the wild action of the climax. It's the ultimate irony. His fatal diagnosis finally pushes him to fully open his eyes to Dutch's madness and motivates him to help those he can rather than let them all go down with Dutch. The father-son relationship between Dutch and Arthur officially begins to crumble here. Once his father and a man who had helped those in need, 
Arthur realizes the unfortunate reality that Dutch isn't that person anymore, and begins to seemingly question if he ever was. Dutch's manic actions bring down the law on them, and Arthur makes one final attempt to bring out the good in Dutch. Unfortunately, Dutch has fallen too far with Micah, the gang picks sides, and Arthur, who would have died from his illness anyways, is forced to sacrifice himself in order to save John. Once the perfect image of an outlaw, Arthur realizes that his life could have been lived much differently, much happier. Rather than wallow in his own pity, he uses what life he had left to create that better life for the people he cared about, sticking true to that original Robin Hood idealism. The focus and complexity of the parallels between Arthur and Dutch is the main element that puts this video game above others, while also highlighting clear story structure elements that have been inspired by actual cinema and movies, with the most obvious one being the classic father-son dynamic. While this story was clearly written as an actual script would be, the framing, the lighting, sound design, acting, and more all bring this video game to cinema status, but I'll save that for my next video.